Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome to the final thoughts of Tales of Exilia 2. Just beat it fairly recently. It was about yesterday. I've had a little bit of time to think about it, and I've got some pros and cons to start off with, which is a little bit of an odd way to do this, but it'll make more sense later. I just kind of want to get the good and the bad out of the way first. So... The first good thing I'd like to talk about is I really liked the returning cast from the first game, including a few extra members like Gaius. It was a lot of fun to be able to play through the game with all of them, and I think the story was improved because of it, being that the good part of the story, in my opinion, was because you got to see these characters if you played the side missions, and you got to see how they coped with the world as it is now how it was different from a year ago. And I'll go more into that later. Uh, another character I really enjoyed was Elle. I thought she was actually really good at being a character that I could emphasize with. She said things that everyone else thought, but they never managed to voice. And in particular, that was one thing I really enjoyed about her. Ludger also had a really good connection with her. I had a few issues with Ludger, which once again I will discuss later. But... Ludger was able to effectively communicate with her. Uh, Story-wise, the best thing I liked about this story overall was the fractured dimensions. And at first, they didn't really seem that important. It, it just kind of seemed very confusing, and I didn't understand it. However, as you went on, especially getting to the point of whenever you were looking through the ruins at the bottom of the lake, I started to get this this feeling, this vibe that... I might not be the good guy in this situation, because I'm playing as Ludger, and up until now you feel like Ludger is doing the good thing. He's getting rid of these other dimensions that are going to cause problems for our own. But the more you look into it, it's not just that they're causing problems, it's that, oh wait, there's people here, and they have opinions and thoughts and feelings. In one instant, you're basically just destroying them and killing them. And that was actually really interesting to me, was that it wasn't just, oh, I'm going to take down the bad guy, and we're working towards the goal, and everyone's cheering for me except for the bad people, but they're bad, so we don't care what they think. It, it got to the point after a while where I thought of it as, I might not be the good guy, and what we're doing might be the wrong thing, especially with Julius's constant telling us of, stop doing that, it'll be bad. Uh, so that that's the end of the story for now, I'll go into more of it later. The combat system was another improvement that was made, I really enjoyed that. They, uh, they had the same combat system, but they made some improvements that definitely helped. And as a final pro, I'd like to add, scary go round. <laughs> Now we're going to move on to the cons, which I have about the same amount of. And I've voiced some of these opinions before, but the first thing and the biggest problem that I have with this game is that the main part of this world was entirely the same as the main part of the last world. Point being, 90% of the locations in this game are from the first game, and there's only so far you can get before nostalgia starts turning into boredom, if that makes sense. Especially considering that it's not true nostalgia for me, it's just remembering. Like, oh, this was a place I went to before. It didn't help that I already didn't like some of the world structure from the first game, being the field areas, they all felt very same-ish to me. In fact, I got this sort of vibe from it in the way that if you've ever beaten one of these Tales games, you either get, you usually get a new game plus, but if you go back to your old save right before you have to defeat the final boss, the whole world kind of has this weird dead feeling, if that makes sense. As in, there's not really a reason for you to explore the rest of the world. There might be some side missions and stuff, but areas you've already visited don't really have a purpose, because they've already been used. You've already used them for their story element. And... Now they kind of just have placeholder NPCs, not placeholder, but they have just NPCs that just stand around and they say the same thing and nothing ever really changes with them. The problem that I have with this game is that a large portion of this game feels that way. 
You have the main story going on, and you have side quests, which are very good, and I'll go into more of them later. But the world itself just doesn't feel like anything important is happening. Everyone has this general idea of either, I hate Risa Maxia, I hate Olympias, I think Risa Max is cool, I think Olympias is cool, we're fighting. None of it really feels very special, if that makes sense. The second big problem I've had of this game is a big problem that a lot of people have had. The debt system. In essence, it's just padding for the game. I know that it, it had that really odd story moment where that guy said he saved you, but honestly, it never felt like it never felt like it had a purpose of being there. It just felt kind of there, and it took what might have been something closer to a 15 or 20 hour game and turned it into a 30 or 35 hour game, and that's not really cool with me. That 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 was annoying. And I'll give it that. I will say this, in its defense, they gave you plenty of really easy money earning opportunities, but the fact still stands that there was a good hour's worth of footage between every episode, every story episode, of me having to go and fight some enemies, and that's kind of annoying. My final problem with the game was Julius. The way that he acted. I've said it before, but I was always curious why Julius would never talk to us. From looking at it, from what I can tell, Julius had the point of trying to tell us, stop doing this because otherwise you're going to lead to this bad section of endings, which we kind of had. But at the same time, I never saw why Julius couldn't tell us these things. If he had decided to verbalize things, we might have been able to find alternate solutions to our problems. Possibly. It might have turned out similar, but at the very least we would have known what's going on. The only reasoning that you have for not being able to do that is that it would have seriously screwed up the plot. And that's probably why they did it, but it doesn't make it right from a storytelling perspective. And as a final small con, I have no idea who Elise's voice actor is, and I'm a little bit sad about that. Okay, now we're on to the section I'm actually interested in the most. This is a section I've titled in my notes, Controversial. And the idea behind this is that these are things which I felt both good and bad about, or that I felt good about, or I felt bad about, but other people felt differently. So a big problem that I and other people have had with this game is that Ludger is mostly mute through most of the game, which initially is kind of jarring, because it feels a little odd to have all the other player characters talking, and then have Ludger just kind of stand there and not say anything, or nod his head, or say, yeah. He, he just, he never elaborates on anything, and sure, he actually does talk to them, you know, via the decision-making thing, but he doesn't physically talk to them, and I know you can get that in the new game plus, but I still feel, once again, that that would have been nice to have initially. However, the more you go through the game, and the more used to it you get, you feel like you can kind of read his emotions more from his face and his reactions to things, which I know isn't really an excuse for not putting voice acting in, but I don't think it was actually that bad, is what I'm trying to say. The biggest problem with this game is that I don't like that it has the exact same world as the old game, but for a lot of how the story goes, it would have been impossible or at least very difficult to have had a lot of these side missions if they didn't live in the exact same world. Point being that we would go to a section and someone would talk about something they did there, or we would see a bunch of characters, for example, for example, that section that had Alvin seeing Pressa and talking to her whenever he saw the ring on her finger, that would have been very difficult to do had they not been in the exact same world. So I can see why it, it's kind of difficult or even impossible to not have the same world for the story, but at the same time, it does rub me the wrong way. On the plus side, I liked a lot of the music from the first game and they kept a lot of it, which could be seen as a little bit annoying in that it feels like they didn't do a whole lot of work, but I felt like a lot of the music in the first game was really good, so I can kind of work around that. Now on to Ludger's battle system. A lot of people said that Ludger was overpowered, 
And the reason they said he's overpowered is because he has these three weapons available to him at any time. I personally can understand that. However, I will say that I enjoyed very much playing as Ludger and being able to swip, switch through his three weapons at any time. This made it feel less annoying in that you might have a weapon that has a type disadvantage against an enemy. And normally in most games you'd have to switch out to a different weapon. But this allows you to switch between your three available weapons and possibly get rid of the type disadvantage or get a type advantage. Which is cool. Another problem that's been had with it is if you tried to play with characters other than Luger, it can be hard because your cast changes almost constantly. So, Ludger's the only real constant in this game. And the game is balanced around playing as Ludger, which makes some of the other characters have a very difficult time against certain enemies because they will just be constantly type disadvantaged against them. Once again, I still think Ludger was an interesting character. It just was very difficult to play as anyone else if you would be interested in doing that. Haha, <laughs> the decision system. The decision system. Initially, I thought it was kind of dumb, especially considering that most of the time, making a different decision had only the real difference of somebody liking what you said or somebody not liking what you said. And for the most part, it generally didn't change anything but maybe two lines of dialogue, which doesn't really feel like a decision to me. It just kind of feels like you're just in a car and you tell someone, I want to go right, and they say, okay, we're going right. And then they immediately make a U-turn and keep going down the road. It, it seemed like an odd decision system to me. However, later in the game, when they actually made use of it for the different endings, it was kind of neat for that. I just feel like they could have worked on it a little bit more. So I feel kind of mixed on that. Now the endings. And I'm going to go more in depth in a minute. But as a very basic overarching thing... Some people didn't like the endings, and when I say some people, I mean I looked online when I was looking for how to do these endings, and a lot of people seem really mixed. A lot of people seem to like them, a lot of people don't. I personally liked all of the endings. Yes, yes, I will say that. To some limited extent, I liked all of the endings for one reason or another. Now, the problem some people had with these endings is some of them just didn't feel right, and... In that regard, some of these endings kind of felt like a visual novel, in that there were bad endings, and while I know that they were, they felt wrong, and they left you with a bad feeling, I think they were supposed to do that, and I think they were good because of that. Now, I'm actually going to move on now to the different endings and my discussions and thoughts about each of them, so that's where we'll be heading next. Now, let's start how I did it, with the bad ending. A lot of people didn't actually like this ending because they said it seemed uncharacteristic of him and unrealistic having this guy who has been fairly chill throughout the entire game basically flip, go full chromatis mode and start attacking his teammates. Now, I have to disagree with this actually. People will generally follow the same route that they normally follow, however, people can become unrational and uncharacteristic when backed into a corner such as when Gaius prepared to kill his brother, which is what exactly happened. I think Ludger kind of just snapped. He just went. Like he, he probably didn't think about it much. He just thought, I'm not going to let these people kill my brother. Now, of course, this felt really sad in that Ludger was basically saying in this ending that he was willing to sacrifice everything. His friendships, his world, L, everything in order to be with his brother and not have to kill him and you know that was that was touching in a way and it felt very futile because you know his brother's not going to live much longer but it still felt very touching and for that I enjoyed it in particular I did actually enjoy as well that they bothered to animate this ending because if they just left us with a couple lines of text while it would have still had emotional impact, the emotional impact would have been somewhat limited. But the fact that they animated the whole thing and showed us them embracing, it it just, it, it left a much more bigger impression on me. It felt much more important, and I really enjoyed that. Now we're moving on to the good ending. And I'd like to preface this by saying, 
I'm going to call this the not-so-good ending, because that's how I feel about it. Now, this ending obviously isn't the true ending, because it doesn't have all of the stuff that the true ending normally would give you. But this feels kind of like the ending that you are, quote, supposed to do. And everyone's kind of pushing you towards this. Your entire party members, everyone's kind of pushing you towards taking this good ending of more or less letting L die and fixing the fractured dimensions. This is the ending that you have to make, for lack of a better term, a hard adult decision. Where it's something that you obviously don't like, but it's something expected of you. And it's something that's going to benefit the most people. It it feels it feels bad in that Elle is constantly said through the story towards the end that she feels like the fake, that she's not the real Elle. And when you go with this decision, you're essentially saying you're right. It feels like Elle has to take the blow here, which is kind of tragic because she's a kid. And that you're saying that she's fake in that your daughter is more real to her than she is. And of course this ends with Ludger meeting Elle's mother, which, while happy, it kind of feels like that it might go the same way that Elle's mother did, where they don't specifically say it, but it seems like she probably died, based upon comments that Victor makes and how that picture kind of had a shined out mother's face. So, I don't know, it seems like it might not go as smoothly as they hope, but it's not a bad ending. Now, on to the true ending. This is the last ending that I completed. I actually enjoyed the true ending a lot. In this ending, Ludger realized that he that he wanted to sacrifice himself in order to save Elle, which Elle, of course, had said, you know, she's the fake and she doesn't consider herself real. Through the story, Ludger's realized that while someone might not be considered real to someone, in his knowledge of Mila and Muse, Mila being, you know, he knew the old, he, he saw the alternate Mila, and Muse being that he never saw her as she was super crazy mode, he only saw her as kind of quirky but nice and gentle mode. That while these other versions might be considered not real to someone else, that they were perfectly real to him. She was real enough that he was willing to sacrifice himself for her. I really like that this ending allows you to make the decision of taking this kind of in your own hands, and you still save the world, but you're saving L, which I think honestly is the best decision in terms of story. I really like the animated ending of this, because you got to see that some of the other party members were actually really successful in all of their endeavors that they were wanting to do. And that was really cool, and of course you get to see Slightly older L, which is another really neat thing. Overall, I really did enjoy the true ending. Now, there's two more endings of this game, which I didn't go over. However, there are going to be links in the description below if you'd like to take a look at them. And these are the money and the cameo ending. We're going to start with the money ending. This is the ending where if you pay off the entirety of your loan, you get this. Now, I'm going to take a minute here for you guys to go look it up if you feel like. And if you've already looked it up, then we're going to continue in just a second. Now, this ending seems a little out of character to me, because you see all of the female characters in the Hot Springs, which is a little weird, because I'm not really used to seeing so much skin, if that makes sense. It, it was just a little odd to me, unexpected even. And this ending as a whole was mostly uninteresting to me, though I did find it funny that all of the guys were inside of Tipo because the girls didn't trust them. I, th I thought that was mildly humorous. Now on to the cameo ending. This is an ending which I believe, I don't know exactly, but if you go through some EX dungeons in this game, you I believe you end up fighting them. They will basically beat the game for you, so to speak. And I don't know much about the first Tales games, but looking at these endings, the character models seem kind of weird. Now I believe that's because these character models used to be 2D, and now they're making them 3D makes them look a little weird. I think that's the reasoning behind that. And I thought the way that they saved the world was a little funny, because it's all done with text, and they're just like, ha, ha, take that. And they're like, yeah, that was kind of easy. I don't know why you were having so much trouble. It, it was humorous, but I'm sure it probably meant more to the actual people who've played the first game, which I haven't. So that's the 
big part of all of this. This is going to be the my last few thoughts that I just couldn't quite fit into these sections. Overall, I really did enjoy this game. I thought it was really good. This was actually one of the few games that's brought me to tears. I normally don't get teary about these type of things. I suppose, at least for me, that says something. Maybe to other people it just seems kind of gimmicky and they didn't really like it, but I really did enjoy it. The biggest things I really liked that this game brought up and dealt with was the concepts of social and personal identity. Is this person real to me and personally, you know, am I real to them? Which in real life doesn't really come up that often, but if you had a time travel story like this or a dimension travel story as this goes, if you have multiple people that are supposed to be fulfilling the same place, it can lead to one person being much less important than the other, and that can be really mess. It can really mess with your psyche. All in all, I just really enjoyed how the game brought that up. Another thing, I think the game obviously would have been much better without the padding, but the story was pretty good. I think actually, as an alternative, I know it wouldn't work very well in terms of a business point of view. But I think this actually might have gone over much better if it was kind of like a DLC, if that makes sense. I know this would have been a very large DLC, and DLC doesn't quite work this well for something that is this large. But this honestly feels like it would have been perfect in the environment of a DLC. Being that it's the same world, but it's a new story, and... I think it would have gone better that way if it could have somehow been sold in that way, though, you know, maybe for a higher price. I don't know, just my thoughts on that. Now, the side quests in this game. Oh man, the side quests. I honestly think if you played through this game, only did the main story and didn't do the side quests, you might not enjoy it that much. I'd have to say. Because I feel like a large portion of the good part of this story comes through the side quests. Being able to see how these characters have managed to cope with everything that happened in the first game and their new ever-changing world in ways that you might have not originally thought about. And I find that fascinating, honestly. I really, really enjoy this. And I think if you didn't play through the side quests in this game, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting. Anyway, that's all of my thoughts. I, I hope I didn't ramble too much. I actually tried to structure this really well. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It, of course, had lots of cutting in it because I still have trouble organizing my thoughts. But due to the magic of video editing, it makes it just a little bit easier. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And uh, the next series is coming up soon. Actually, I think it may have started already. I'm debating on whether starting it early because I got a little bit excited with this series. And I might already have all of these uploaded like a month early. All of these recorded edited and uploaded a month early. In my defense, I thought the game was ending sooner than it did, so I got a little bit excited and just kept going and going and going. But hopefully you guys are enjoying the new Let's Play, if it's already come out, and if it's not, hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching, slash listening, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!